Hey guys, Mr. B here, bringing you another math video. This one on um, transformations of graphs. And in this particular example, we have two graphs given to us. Um, the original graph here, y is equal to f of x, and it's trans and the transformed graph, y is equal to g of x. And what we want to do is we want to figure out what the transformed equation of this guy is in terms of f of x. So essentially what we're trying to figure out is y is equal to a f of b x minus h plus k. So in doing this what we want to do is we want to find what the um, you know the a value, the b value, the h value, and the k value are. So um, Really, what I what I do when I'm doing this with my students is I start by um, writing out a list of a, b, h, and k, and what I write as ref, which is called reflection. So, I just, first thing I do is I analyze: Are there any reflections here? So usually what I'll do for reflections, I'll look at an obvious part of the graph. So I'll look at this little short piece here. And then I'll try to match that to the, well, actually, this is the original. So I'll look at the short, this little guy on the original, and then match it up with the, the part on the new graph. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refer to this as old and new. It makes life a little bit easier instead of original and transformation form. So, so the old graph here, and then a new graph. So you can see that they're almost they're flipped in different spots here so what we have is basically a reflection in the y-axis so I'm just gonna write y-axis we have to think about what that actually means so what the y-axis actually means is that means that b is gonna be less than zero so when we find our b value we have to make sure that it's going to be negative alright so the next thing that I want to do is I want to find my a and b values so my a and b values the way I find them I look at the domain and range and compare them from my old function to my new function. So what I'll do is I'll write out old and domain range and then I'll write out new and I'll write domain and range. And I'm not really con concerned too much about you know this uh, my domain for my old function goes from negative to 8 to 2. I'm not really concerned about you know that starts at negative 8 and ends at 2. I'm more concerned about the number of units because I'm looking for stretches and that's all I care about is has it grown, has it shrunk, that kind of thing. So it goes from negative 8 to 2 so that's a total of 10 units. So 10. And my range for my old function, this is the lowest point here, this is the highest point so I can count up it goes from 2 to 6 so that's actually 4 units. And let's look at the domain and range now of the new function. So if I look at my new function, it has a domain. Its, its furthest left point is 4, and its furthest right point is 5. So it went from 10 to 5. And the range on the old one was 4, and the range on this guy, so it goes from, looks like, negative 3 to negative 1. So that's 2. So what I can do from this from this is I can actually find the HS and the VS. So the HS, which is the horizontal stretch, is going to come from my domain. So to find the HS, all I need to simply do is divide um, new over old. So my horizontal stretch is going to be 5 over 10. So I'm using the range, the domain numbers now. So my HS is 1 over 2. My vertical stretch, I can do exactly the same thing. New over old. And that's 2 over 4, which again is 1 half. So you might be saying, well, why are we finding the HS and the VS? So what we know is that the HS and the VS are closely related to the A and B value. So my horizontal stretch is equal to the absolute value of 1 over B. 
So sort of the absolute value, one over the absolute value of B. So what that means is, well, I know my HS is one over two, and that my that's equal to my one over the absolute value of B. So I know that my B value must be positive or negative two. So I know that B B can be either negative two or positive two. So one of them. So if you look back here, this is why it's so important that we do the reflection. Because now we can choose B to be negative two because there's a reflection in the Y axis. So there's my B is negative two. Now the um, the A value is a little bit easier for the vertical stretch. This is important to know. It's the absolute value of A. So I know my vertical stretch is one half must be equal to the absolute value of A and therefore A can be either A can be either one over two or negative one over two or one over two so I just have to decide which one it is since there's no reflection in the x-axis I know that my A must be positive so I'll choose this one and this one so guys, when you're in your classes, you might not actually have to write all this stuff down. You just might think about it and make the decision. All right, so now my next step is usually what I'll do is I'll pick a point on the old function. So I'm going to pick this guy just because it's all positive. The point is 2, 4. So I'm going to attempt to find my h and k values now. So that's my point 2, 4. So x, y there's two and there's four so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the various transformations that this guy is gonna go under and see what I end up with so this first step I'm gonna use my a and my b value and I'm gonna transform it here so what I'm basically doing is I'm using the mapping rule step by step so the mapping rule is this guy one over b x plus h um, 1 over 2 y sorry not 1 over 2 a y which is going to be 1 over 2 um, a y plus k so that's another thing you should know for your for any assessments so what I'm going to do now first is 1 over b x so if b is negative 2 so that's going to be negative 1 over 2 x and then I'm just going to, I don't know what H and K are, so I'm just going to do one transformation at a time. I'm going to do my stretches first. And then A is one half, so it's one half Y. So I'm going to do my stretches. So I'm going to go two times negative one half, that's negative one. And then four times one half is two. And then in this column, I'm going to try to figure out what my H and K values are, which is going to get me my equation one half y plus k so I know this point is this point right here so it gets transformed to that point so that's four and negative two just like that so what you gotta ask yourself is how did I get from I'm at negative one how did I get to four so remember this is the x value so if I'm at negative one I go to four then I have to go 5 right. So that means my h value is 5. If I'm at 2 and I have to go to negative 2, then I have to go 4 down. So that means my k value is negative 4. So there they are. 5 and negative 4. So that's my h and my k. So I'm just going to repeat that just to make sure everyone understands. So I'm at negative 1. I need to get the 4. All I have to do in, on the number line literally is go 5 right, which is means a positive horizontal translation of 5. If I'm at 2 and I need to get the negative 2, I have to go 4. This is vertically. So 4 down, which is negative 4. So now that I have all these things, all i got to do is fill in this equation. Y is equal to, so A is 1 half, 1 half. F b is negative 2 x 
and then minus 5 and then k is negative 4 subtract 4 and there is my transformed equation so guys I hope this question helps you in your studies um, really important to make sure you got all the little things figured out like HS 1 over absolute value of B, VS is absolute value of A, things like that. Um, so hope this helps. See you guys in class. Thanks for watching.